In this video, I'm going to talk about the brain stem. Brain stem. And we briefly discussed the brain stem when we were talking about the structure of the nervous system as a whole. So recall that the brain stem is right around here. And if we look at our larger drawing of the central nervous system, this is the brain stem right here. And the brain stem connects basically all the parts of the nervous system together. So the brain stem connects the cerebrum on top, and it connects the spinal cord below and it connects the cerebellum, which is behind the brainstem. The brainstem also connects most of the cranial nerves. Let me just write that over here. Cranial nerves. So here's a different image of the brain looking at it from below. So here's the cerebrum, here's the cerebellum, and here's the brainstem. And all these little stringy things coming out are the cranial nerves, and most of them are coming out of the brainstem. So we'll come back to that in a minute. But basically, because the brainstem is connecting all these other parts of the nervous system together, its anatomy is complex. There's a lot going on in the brainstem, even though it's a fairly small structure. It's just this little guy right here, but it does a lot of things. So let's take a look at some sections to look inside the brainstem. So recall that this top part up here is called the midbrain, this middle part is called the pons, and this lower part is called the medulla. So now let's take some sections. So let's pretend we're cutting through the midbrain right here, and we're going to look at it from the top. So over here, this would be a section of the midbrain. Midbrain. And when we're looking down at it from the top, it's kind of got these big parts that stick out the front of it and some little bumps on the back. And don't worry about the names of any of those right now. And then if we take a section through the pons, so if we cut through the pons like this, and we look down at the pons from the top, this would be a view of a section of the pons. Let me just write that. Pons. And it's got this really big part that sticks out the front. And then let's take a section here through the medulla. So let's cut through the medulla and look at it from the top. And that would be this guy right here. So this is the medulla. Medulla or medulla. I hear people say it both ways. And the medulla has kind of a different shape. So each, each one of these three main divisions of the brainstem has a little bit of a different shape. The inside of the brainstem has some similarities to the spinal cord, particularly down low in the medulla where it's connecting to the spinal cord right here. And similarly to the spinal cord, most of the gray matter of the brainstem is on the inside, and most of the white matter of the brainstem is on the outside but it's a lot more mixed together than it is in the spinal cord. So there's kind of white and gray matter more scattered about, although most of the gray matter is on the inside and most of the white matter is on the outside. Much of the brainstem gray matter are just these kind of distributed neurons that aren't in nice discrete little places or bundles. And we call this the reticular formation of the brainstem. Just all these these neuron somas scattered about through a lot of the gray matter inside the brainstem. Let me just write that over here. The reticular formation. Reticular formation of the brainstem. And this turns out to be a really important structure. The reticular formation of the brainstem plays a big role in lots of autonomic functions. Autonomic. And plays a big role in controlling things like circulation, respiration, and digestion, some of our critical organ system functions. And in addition to that, participating in a lot of these lower functions of the nervous system, the reticular formation sends lots of axons projecting up to the cerebrum up here and plays a major role in lots of the higher functions of the nervous system as well, including cognition, emotion, and consciousness. Now, a lot of the white matter that's passing through the brainstem is actually connecting the different parts of the nervous system. So, for example, on these drawings over here, which are kind of views from the front cutting through the nervous system, like I've done here, and what these drawings are showing are what we often call the long tracks. Long tracks. And we call them that because they're collections of axons traveling a long distance through the central nervous system often connecting the cerebrum up top down to the spinal cord, and they're just passing through the brainstem on their way to or from the spinal cord or the cerebrum. And there are two big categories of long tracks that are really important passing through the brainstem. So let me write two little marks here. The first play a big role in the motor functions of the nervous system, and these are actually the upper motor neurons. So here in this drawing, what they've shown is upper motor neurons starting way up here in the cerebrum, and then passing down through the brainstem and mostly crossing over to the other side of the spinal cord where they're going to innervate lower motor neurons. And here what they're showing in this drawing 
are somatosensory long tracks. Somatosensory. And there are different kinds of somatosensory tracks carrying information through the nervous system. But what this one's showing is somatosensory information coming up the spinal cord, crossing and going up the brainstem, and then going to the cerebrum on the other side from the body. And so the brainstem is playing host to these long motor and somatosensory tracks that are carrying information up and down between the cerebrum and the spinal cord. And as if all of that wasn't enough functions for the brainstem to be doing, most of the cranial nerves, as I mentioned, are attached to the brainstem. And the cranial nerves are doing all sorts of different things. There are 12 pairs of these cranial nerves, and most of them are attached to the brain stems. Let me just draw a few on my drawing over here. But here's a much better drawing where they're showing the brain stem, and, and all of these little nerves coming out here are cranial nerves, and there are 12 pairs of them, most of which come out of the brain stem. And the cranial nerves perform all sorts of functions, including motor functions, sensory functions, and a number of different kinds of senses in addition to somatosensory functions. There's things like hearing and taste and a number of automatic functions like reflexes and autonomic functions. Automatic functions. And the cranial nerves are related to a lot of the gray matter inside of the brainstem because in addition to the reticular formation, this kind of just number of neuron somas that are scattered around, there are collections of neuron somas that are nuclei, that are discrete nuclei that have been named. And the cranial nerves are often carrying information away from these nuclei or into these nuclei, depending on what functions they're performing. So for example, in this illustration over here, we're kind of looking at the brainstem from the left side. This is the front and this is down. And what they're showing are these nuclei have neuron somas and then axons are leaving the brainstem through cranial nerves to perform motor functions. And then in this drawing, they're showing sensory information coming in through cranial nerves to the brainstem to different nuclei in different parts of the brainstem. Now these cranial nerves are mostly performing these functions in the head and the neck. Let me just mark that in on our person over here. But there are a few cranial nerves that actually travel from the brainstem all the way down into the body and perform functions in the trunk and in the limbs. Some examples of cranial nerve functions include sensation of the face and movements of the eyes, face, jaw, and throat, in addition to influencing organs like the heart and the intestines. So there's a lot going on with the brainstem, and I think I'll stop here. And in later videos, we can spend some more time going into some of the details of the different structures and the different functions of the brainstem. But I just want to introduce it and give you a feel for all the different things it does.